the information comes out about it, the breakdown, and it's like, this is a springboard into Atlantis. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what was that like going in there thinking, okay, you know, if, if this, if this pans out the way that it's supposed to, this, this could be another seven years. Was that well, daunting? Was that like, well, at some point I'm going to have to watch this whole thing or, or not, depending on, on your personal approach. Sure. And here's where we kind of can't avoid like what happened. Okay. Right. So I, as I said earlier, like I do take things quite seriously, right? If I'm going to commit to something, I do take that very seriously. And um, yes, I, you know, that I, you know, I've heard that, oh, she didn't want to live in Vancouver. Well, that's so not true. I mean, I have family in Vancouver and, and I've, you know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm Canadian and I'm mm-hmm. happy. Anyway, that was part, was that part? No, absolutely not. Cause when I, do I want to live in Vancouver? Sure. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> do I want to work on this show? If I didn't, as I said before, when you look at the breakdown, when you look at the material, when you look at the situation, you go, could I do that for a long extended period yeah. of time or not? Right. Um, And so I would not have auditioned for it uh, or done it if I had not been prepared to do it. And if I was going to do it, I was going to do it extremely uh, in a committed way. And and part of that was when I when I drove the producer writers crazy with details, a lot of that was like, what's going to where are we going with this? And should I do this or should I do this? And can you tell me? how this out what's the outcome of these various things and should i foster a kind of this or this or anyway so you can be mentally and and actor actingly prepared or just project where the growth of this character or the knowing of the so i was asking a lot of like future questions and so anyway uh okay yes so when i signed on to do anything in this show for sure i was prepared especially looking at how long this one ran and the potential of the second one to do the same right Gotta, gotta, Absolutely. gotta commit to that. Did, so then, <clears throat> yeah, and then you know. So things... then they then they held me. You know they they you know they hold you from doing anything else by paying you a certain amount of money to keep you from getting on anything else. And then um, then in the fall, uh, they let me go. And no phone I... call. Just no. Just your agent was notified. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm and green about that. Is that how it's done? So, well, I think <clears throat> I, I, it was unceremonious, and here is why. Um, so, when I when this came around, and I think it would have been happening in July, late July, yeah. and we would be shooting in August, and and you said it was two thousand three. Mm-hmm. So, at that point, uh, uh, 2001, So, at that point, I had now. I don't have children, and I don't you know uh i don't have other careers but for 20 years straight i went to burning man changed my life if you know what that is and oh very familiar i haven't been but yeah the first year i went and for every year afterwards i not single-handedly um produced a camp like we we if you know anything about it there's there are theme camps and um you apply for space and there's rows of streets and the front street is the main, you know, it was on the main drag. So that it's all facing everything and you're sort of responsible. You have to really show up with the goods. Now I went, you know, for the first time in 98 and there were 14,000 people in the, you know, now it's up in the eighties and stuff like that, but it changed my life. It, the first time I went, it changed my life. By the second year, my boyfriend and, uh, and I at the time, spent so much money so much time creating uh an, a scene yeah an interactive scene uh with a bunch of our friends and we just created this amazing and it was so gratifying uh it was like producing a play uh, a, 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 an amusement park kind of engaging i mean we had everything it was set decking it was music it was we were painting and building and coordinating and we had you know it was so much and we all had characters we were playing and we all and so and producing and you have to bring everything 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 right from water to food to fuel to generators to yeah because it all goes out at the end right you guys leave it better than you found it biggest 
leave no trace event on the planet. And so for me, it was uh, my family. I missed weddings, showers, bar mitzvahs, everything for, I know my family knows how important it is to me. It is my family. It's Mecca. It was going back every year. And here's where, you know, if I commit to something, uh, you know, I'm going to yeah. do my best to be my word and do my thing. So right. I had committed. This was a year long. This is a, I did a, a documentary on the, the theme camp uh, leads and what they it's a full time unpaid job that runs year round. And you're coordinating hundreds of people and everything from, you know, far right brains to far left brains and infrastructure and trucks yeah. and insurance. And, da, 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 da. and we were bringing out huge structures like huge scaffolding and stages and lighting and music. And so I loved it. And at that point, it it, in no way was known and there was no cell service and there was no selfies and there was no, and so it was a much quieter thing, but the, what it did have is a terrible stigma of, Oh yeah, it's just naked drugged out people, you know, pissing around in the, in the desert. Right. And so uh, my agent advised me to tell them to, 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 to say, that I needed the days off. I had to be done by this date, which I did because I was a camp lead and I was driving a five ton truck out that was full of all the stuff. So she, he said, tell them it's a family reunion. I said, Oh, it is. Uh, and that you can't miss it. I'm like, and I can't, and we'll have an end date that they have to have you out by. And I was like, okay, so I get, so that's our, that's, it's a true story for me. Right. As I said, it's as important to my to me as my my real family is. And so it is a family. Yes. So go to set. Fall in love with everybody. Martin Wood and I are like, but just like everybody was awesome. He's amazing. The crew, the cast, everybody's awesome. So fun. And I can't keep my mouth shut, I guess. It is a family reunion. I am going. People are interested. I'm talking about it. I'm also having costumes made. I had to like I'm a stilt walker. So I was having these huge stilt costumes made and you this know is a I was big having, thing you're excited i'm excited and i'm having like foggers and bubble makers delivered to my you know ah. to my trial like it was bananas so yeah and so you're, the this end, is this is all that's going on when you're filming lost city you're getting prepped for this yeah got it i'm literally coordinating like a producer heading out into the sahara desert to, you know to, to and getting all the tickets and all the you know early entries and all you know all that stuff whatever um doing all that and it's not sure yes are is there naked yes yes are there sure yes but yeah, for it's me, everything it's, it's everything. something much more right? yeah so i they all then come to know that i'm going to burning okay and i and they arrange the schedule to get me out by the date that we agreed upon in my contract and whatever so uh in fact i shot all day one day i had a day off and i shot again another day uh, you know so i was like wednesday and Friday. So I fly uh, the last flight out from Vancouver to Los Angeles. I pack the truck all the next day. I have to pick up the truck. I pack the whole truck, five ton with friends, and we fill the whole thing. And I fly back that night and I go to work on Friday. And then I boot it to the airport again and fly back to Los Angeles. And I drive because we have to go in and build this whole thing before it opens. So I drive out to the desert and we, you know, we do our whole thing. So I don't know how long later it was that I talked to John Smith, uh, you know, mm-hmm. producer on the show. Mm-hmm. And I guess I called him, you know, uh, at some point and I just said, Hey, I guess I just want to know what happened. And and this said, is after, this is after everything has been. Yeah, this is, you know, I think it might've been, it might've actually been a year later. I don't know. Okay. Um, um, so he said, why don't you come in and see me? I was like, oh, good okay. guy. I feel like I'm going to the principal's office, right? What's this? I, I, so I go in there. Lovely man. He was such a lovely man. And he said, um, I said, can I guess? And he goes, yeah. Yes. And I said, oh, well, I know I drove them crazy asking too many questions and getting, I, I drove them crazy. He goes, yeah. And I said, and it was the Burning Man thing. He goes, yeah. He said, he said, they felt that if you were more committed to naked drugging in the desert that you would be committed to uh doing the show the way they need them needed you to and i was like the irony about that john is that uh 
for me, it's a true story. I was going to a family reunion. I was not lying. Um, it was more important to me than several family meetings, as I said. And uh, my commitment to it is the commitment that I would show to the show. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, no one ever had the conversation with me. Yeah. I was unceremoniously let go without explanation. And and he said, I think there are regrets about that, the way that went down. And I said, okay, well, and I don't know. And here again, you know, I don't know how I would have done it differently. I think at that time, my agent was right to say, I don't think they're going to understand that you're that committed to getting naked and doing drugs in the desert. <laughs> like, they won't understand what you're doing. And we have to not, yeah, we have to lie, I guess, or would say it's something else or whatever. So Burning Man. that's how it happened. Yeah. Thank you for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up with that like button. It will encourage the algorithm to show this to other Stargate fans. Also, please consider sending this to a fellow Stargate friend. I also want to invite you to subscribe to future episodes right here on YouTube. We are a live show, so changes are likely to happen all the time. And if you plan on joining us live, you'll want to be the first to know. Be sure to visit dialthegate.com for the complete guest schedule so you'll know when to join us and ask your very own questions to our guests. See you on the other side.